What's cracking peeps? Gabriel Say, aka Super Dad in the building. Welcome to a new series, Super Say Me. This is a 12 part segment of this series that I'm calling 40 Fit, which is sponsored by My Protein, proudly. And let's just say it's been a mad few. I turned 36, yay. I had a second kid, COVID-19 hit. Anxiety has been knocking on my door like a, like a day. And basically, I let things slip pretty bad and I'm not getting any younger. So this Teach Me Tuesday style series will be passing on the quality information that I'll be re-implementing and learning to get myself back on track, if that makes sense. Along with giving beginners the know-how of how to get started, no matter how old you are, basically. I'll also be doing fit fam lifestyle vlogs alongside this so you can see the actual application of the tips that I'll be giving on my road to getting and back on a bandwagon, juggling everything. Looking, and but most importantly, most feeling super. You know what I'm saying? Super dead, you get it? You get it? Oh. I wanted to kick off this series by looking at past, present, and future mistakes to avoid, correct, and prepare for. P.S. When I was looking, there's actually a lot of bro science online regarding all of this. Anyway, let's get into it. You know what to do. Smash the ting, yeah? The first thing would be periodize your training. The same way that I would prepare for, say, my boxing match or powerlifting meet or bodybuilding show, this approach is even more important now for training in general, working up to the chosen milestone that you've put in place. Which also means don't rush into things that you haven't done in years. For example, the combine. When I did the combine, I mashed up my knee because I went straight into doing something that I did flipping 10 years ago. We need to make sure we build up to these things at least a bit before. If I had done maybe a week of just doing some random agility drills before going in, then that probably would have been a bit better. So how'd you combat this, yeah? Figure out the goals that you have and the things that you want to do and then reverse engineer back to the basic movement patterns and then just ease yourself in. Number two, recovery and rehab. Two of the most neglected things in my life and I, it always led to the same flipping outcome. Oh, you're injured. Oh, you have to rest. Don't speak such blasphemy. <laughs> I shall train through this. Meanwhile, these guys are looking at my knees like. So implementing and being consistent with what most bros avoid, the yoga, mobility, self-massage, foam rolling, primal movement, all that kind of stuff is key. There's tons of apps and web classes and there's loads out. Number three, you can't go hard all the time. You know, like, Yo, you have to go beast mode, but beast mode, you want them games? Because in reality, not many people actually do. And social media paints that picture, which, sorry, I've been guilty of as well. And I think it's because people don't actually want to see, like, going through the, the resting and recovery phase. They just want to see flipping, getting stuff done. So basically just be aware of what you're actually what you actually seeing online and stuff and draw inspiration. Draw inspiration from other people's hardcore workouts, but then knowing that you're gonna take the time as and when your body tells you to kind of like ease up a little bit. But don't use this as an excuse to be lazy though. Always watching. Number four, I, I probably say this like every, every couple years, I need to fix my nutrition. I go like so well for like a period of time and then it just, it tanks. But this time, it's bad, <laughs> you know, so bad. <laughs> it's mainly because of like time. Like you wouldn't think that like, just having another kid, well actually you would, you would think that if, you, if it demolishes your time availability. Processed, processed foods have been in abundance, which hasn't helped my gallbladder issues, which has been coming back with a vengeance. That's another story for another day. And with the reduction of time, I actually need quick and easy and, and tasty. I, I'm not doing none of that flipping plain salmon and rice dead. Whilst focusing on the veg variety, increased lean protein, which I'll go into more detail, but studies say that as you get older, it's actually beneficial, especially if you're training, to have more protein. Not in excess, but different story, different day, yeah? Reduce the processed foods and look at like gut health and minerals. So, like, looking at some of these, uh, what, what's it called? Holistic. The you, the people that use Holistic. Like, thing, like herbs this and stuff. What is Holistic. the word? Holistic. Why are you listening to it? Holistic. Nah, this is going to piss me off. But just as an example, I used to use glutamine for myself and also my clients when they were preparing for bodybuilding shows, I was preparing for bodybuilding shows. And it was to mainly help with like gut health and nutrient absorb absorption, especially when in a very high calorie deficit. And for some reason I stopped. So I'll be implementing stuff like that 
as well. But on that note, shout out to the sponsors, my protein that are sponsoring this series. If you guys want any decent quality supplements, make sure you go to myprotein.com and you can use my code GAB35, which will fetch you a tasty 35% off. See, it helps, it helps you. And then you using my code, that helps me because it lets them know that I sent you, yeah? Links are in the description, by the way. Number five, progressive overload. Not really how you're used to hearing it, because I know when people talk about progressive overload, they're like, increase the weight, increase. For me, there are so many ways that you can progressive overload. What I'm realizing is as I'm getting older, that those other ways are more important. The way I see it, you can list a whole bunch of progression markers that you can set for yourself, basically. Say you're doing a circuit, you normally have to take a minute and a half to recover before doing the next set. You only take a minute to recover and still hit the same intensity, speed and all that. That is a sign of progression to me. That's something that I ticked in the box. If you're just focusing on the weight, there's things like lateral raises, the weight hardly ever goes up. So make your own list and make sure you celebrate those small wins. Numero six, looking at different training styles or even picking up a new skill. For me, I picked up boxing. I freaking love it. It keeps my brain active. It keeps my brain active because I don't want my brain to get knocked. And with this lockdown, I've actually realized how freaking amazing kettlebells are. So we're gonna be looking into like CrossFit wads and primal movements, like that That stuff fascinates me as well. I also decided I'm, I'm gonna get a bike and I'm also gonna be teaching myself how to do backflips and um, you know, like escape. Also, on this whole training tip, unilateral movements, are key especially after i saw a flipping bodybuilder who can squat 260 kilos plus but couldn't even flip in lunge 60 kilos bro that's dead so my advice would be not to be so one track minded and start thinking of other training methods other things that you might like and then see how they can maybe enhance your goal so one you're staying motivated to actually you know reach your goal and you might surprise yourself in actually picking up a new skill that you really, really love. And number seven, testosterone and testosterone replacement therapy. There's actually a whole episode on this because I have very strong feelings about said stuff. I actually did my testosterone test as well. But on that note, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you simmer on that one. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit the like button, smash the thing here. Make sure you stay tuned for this series. I, I know it's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be sexy. Oh, I'm gonna go. Yeah. All right. Bye.